So I've been doing a lot of high-end videos lately, like the RTX 2080 Ti review, the $1,500 gaming PC build, blah, blah, blah. Well, we're done with that today, because today I'm gonna show you how to build a new $300, yes, like actually $300 right now, no Black Friday deals or anything like that, and then we're gonna benchmark it. Let's get into it. Hey, welcome to Zach's Tech Turf. Today I'm gonna to be building and benchmarking this new $300 gaming PC build and hopefully not dropping any parts. And if you're new here and you wanna see more PC building or benchmarking videos, then hit that subscribe button down below and also that notification bell. That way you never miss an episode. But yeah, let's queue up this building montage. Alright, so here we have it. This here is a $300, actually slightly less than $300 gaming PC build. I didn't spend a single extra dollar to make this thing look any better, but it actually looks pretty sharp for such a low price point. Now I'm gonna quickly go over the parts list and then we'll benchmark it to see how it performs. The first part up is the heart and center of this piece, which made this build possible at such a low price point, and that's the AMD Athlon 200 GE. I've made two separate videos on this APU at this point, so make sure you check those out if you haven't already. Ready? But this thing is two cores and four threads clocked at 3.2 gigahertz and allows us to play some games at 1080p pretty well actually. The next part up is the motherboard and here I went with the ASRock B450 HDV which you've probably seen in a couple other videos that I made so far. Now if you're actually using this video as a build guide then I would highly recommend going with an MSI B450 motherboard instead of this one. We recently found out that you can actually overclock the 200GE with an MSI motherboard so I would definitely go with that. The only reason that I went with the ASRock board is because I already owned it and I didn't really feel like buying a new motherboard purely for this video. Sorry. Next up is the RAM. In this kit, I actually did buy purely for the video, and that's the 2x4 gigabyte Team Vulcan DDR4 kit, which is clocked at 3000 megahertz. I only got that high of speed because I found it on a really good deal, so just know that the Athlon 200GE caps your memory speed at 2666 megahertz. Moving on down our parts list, we get to storage, and I just went with a 1 terabyte Seagate Barracuda hard drive. If you were to spend any more money on this system, I would really recommend getting a small SSD to load your operating system on. I just couldn't squeeze one in for less than 300 bucks. Next up is our power supply, and here I went with an EVGA 500 watt unit, which only costs 35 bucks, but you could really find any 400 to 500 watt power supply around this price range. Keep in mind that most people are only using the Athlon 200GE as a placeholder until they upgrade to a better CPU or a better graphics card, so I really wouldn't recommend buying the minimum power supply unless if you're 100% sure that you're never gonna upgrade this system. And finally, to already wrap up this short parts list is the case, and this this is the very cheap Rosewell FBM X1, which was pleasantly easy to work in despite its very cheap price of just 25 bucks. And with the parts list out of the way, it's now time for my favorite part of the video, the benchmarking. And just know that I've set all of these games using the settings that I would personally use if this was actually my system, but just know that you can always change the settings based off of your personal preference. First up, we have Fortnite, and in order to get into that 60 FPS range, I had to drop the settings down to 720p and low, but with a 100% resolution scale. Here with a 57 FPS average, I did have some stutters and it was still definitely playable as I even managed to get a kill during the benchmark. Next up we have Counter-Strike Global Offensive and here in 1080p and low settings I managed to get a very solid FPS average of 77. After that I used the built-in benchmarking tool with Rainbow Six Siege, sorry I never show gameplay for this one I always just use the tool, and in 720p and low settings I got an FPS average of 45. Following that we have PlayerUnknown's Battlegrounds which is still obviously a very tough one to run, and here in 720p 
1920p in very low settings, I could only manage to get 27 FPS. Playable, yes. Enjoyable, not really. Getting into the easier to run games, I tried Rocket League, and here I was very happy with the numbers as I got an FPS average of 77 in 1080p and performance quality settings. Next up was Overwatch, and here again in 1080p and the lowest settings, I got a solid FPS average of 61. And finally to wrap up these benchmarks, the last game I fired up was Dota 2. Keep in mind that any MOBA will perform at least comparable results to this one, and here in 1080p in the fastest settings, I got an average FPS of 96. Well there you have it, that's exactly what you can expect from a new $300 gaming PC here going into 2019. This definitely isn't a powerful PC by any means, but the fact that you can now just upgrade your CPU or your GPU and get a way better system is pretty appealing to you new budget gamers. If it were me personally, I would recommend your first upgrade after the SSD be a graphics card, and I wouldn't buy anything lower than something like a 1050 Ti because the upgrade just wouldn't be worth it for anything less. And then after that, I would upgrade the CPU and then get that RAM to 16 gigabytes. With all that out of the way though, it's now time for December month of giveaways. And because I used a Rosewell case, Case, I think it's now time for another Rosewell giveaway. Rosewell has graciously offered to send one of you guys their new K75 RGB mechanical keyboard. To win the keyboard, all you have to do is comment down below two things. One, that you're actually from the United States or Canada, sorry, and two, that you actually want the keyboard, and I'll randomly respond to one of you within 48 hours, and then I'll pin the comment of the winner so you guys can see who won and stop asking me about it. Well, that wraps up my new $300 gaming PC build guide. Now, feel free to head on over to one of these two videos if you haven't seen them yet, and definitely hit the subscribe button because later this week, I'm doing a style of video that I haven't really done before. You don't want to miss that video.